What makes images look good? You know, when we look at an image, what exactly is it about that image that makes us stop scrolling on our feeds and actually pay attention? What is it that we feel in that moment? And more importantly, at least for you watching this right now, how does it communicate that feeling? That's what we're uncovering today in the next installment of What Makes Images Look Good. And this week we have my friend Liam, also known as Seventh Era, who has graciously provided us with some images for showcase and for analysis. So what we're aiming for here is finding out what makes an image successful at visually communicating. So in this series, I'm going to be talking a lot about visual patterns, about emotion, and hopefully you can start to see a trend in the visual communication techniques used and the success of an image so that you can start to build your own sense of good taste. Now, keep in mind, as always, in YouTube videos and in life, take all of this with a grain of salt because ultimately it is just subjective opinion. But as a lifelong creative across many disciplines and as a Sony Digital Imaging Ambassador, I hope to impart some of my experience onto you for free, although hitting that like button and subscribing would also be a great way to support what I'm doing. Alrighty, let's get into the first image. Alrighty, so Liam has not provided any context for these images, which is totally fine. Uh, so we're gonna be kind of assessing them at face value. We've got six images in this video today that he's, uh, well, he submitted a whole bunch more, but I chose six. And one thing that I particularly enjoy about Liam, you know, knowing him over the course of quite a few years now and following him on Instagram for even longer, is that I've seen tremendous amount of growth in his work over the years. And I think right now, especially with this series of images that we're about to go through, he's shown such a tremendous evolution in his style and approach to photography that I think it's really worth showcasing. And I'm really excited about this particular video and going through these images with you. Alrighty, so this is the first image we have. It's one that is shot uh, in Seoul, uh, DDP, Dong Daedam Design Plaza. I'm sure I'm butchering that name, of course. Um, but what we have here is a very architectural inspired image with a little bit of street vibes and a quite heavy uh, grade on this as well, which uh, gives the, the whole kind of vibe a very uh, solemn look. So I think, you know, for this, I'll talk about why it's successful first and foremost. And I think it's, again, as, you know, trends go with this video series, this image is very easy to understand. So first and foremost, it is the ease of understanding. You can see that this image is really just about this central figure here and then the kind of vastness that surrounds everything else. You know, it is just this, this huge amount of what's called negative space. So I'll just quickly show you, you know, for this kind of, amount of occupying in terms of the overall composition. Um, this is a very small portion of the image. This is what's called positive space. So positive space is the typically your subject. It is the thing that you're visually attracted to first and foremost. It is the, the main thing about the image that is your positive space. The rest of it, all of this up here, all of this down here, everything else is just all negative space. And what this does is it really draws your eye, it draws your attention to the subject, to the positive space. The more negative space you have, especially if your negative space is uh, quite bland, well not bland, but simple, uh, if there's not a lot going on, then the positive space kind of interrupts your vision and interrupts the pattern of it being like, hey, this should be, you know, especially this portion here, this should all look the same. And then as your eyes kind of like skirt to the right and scan the image, you know, suddenly you're interrupted by all of this positive space. And so that allows the brain to really just connect with what's going on in the image. So I love that this image has used just a tremendous amount of negative and positive space. The second thing is that this image, especially with the color grade, 
makes me feel like this image is very solemn. It's very introspective. It's very uh, thoughtful and considered and contemplative. And I think that is due to the nature of how blue the image is. So there's just a tremendous amount of blue. It's it's a very monochromatic kind of blue, but it's used everywhere. It's used even in the, the sub highlights here. Obviously your main highlights here, but it's also used in the shadows, in the shadows here, in the shadows all across this bottom section here. Not too sure whether the, the shadow color specifically is coming through on the YouTube compression, but especially for what I'm seeing right now, the entire bottom of the shadows is very blue and has, has that tinge. Blue has the feeling uh, for most people of this kind of melancholy, uh, cool, kind of emotive feel. It's not vibrant and fiery like a, a yellow or an orange or something like that. It's more subdued and melancholy and, you know, kind of even a, a lower vibration kind of that vibe, right? And so his intentional use of just one color really emotes that for me. One other thing that Liam has done here is used contrast very well. So obviously in the middle, you have this lovely slice of really bright, but not too bright highlights here. And then down the bottom, you've got all of this lovely darkness. It's great. And so what happens is, so I'll just remove that, is again, your eyes will look at this, this middle highlight section and then be like, hey, what is this figure here? What is this dark bit here? And the the amount that it stands out will really help you as a viewer, you know, anchor yourself to it and kind of in, instigate intrigue really as to what is that? And then you can, you know, try to decipher it in real time. Of course, this all happens very, very quickly when you're scanning through images. You know, we, we're so used to scanning through our phones and the feeds and all that kind of stuff. But that is what's happening when, you know, you're using contrast in this way. Really, really nice. One thing I would have personally done just for my own personal taste is this bottom kind of half here. Of course, you have to leave enough contrast, especially around his body here for you to be able to see, oh, that's a person. This person has legs. <laughs> um, but next to that, you know, this whole other section, this section where he's standing on kind of just does nothing. Um, and I think it, for me personally, for my own taste anyway, having this in post-processing just washing it out completely black and then darkening down the blacks of the top portion here as well would have created what I call like a contrast sandwich. And so what that does is it allows you to, as a viewer, more quickly understand what is important in the image and what is not. If it's dark, there's no detail. It's just black. Obviously, it's not important, right? So doing that for me and my style is is a technique that I use so that people can understand images better. But that's a very, very personal preference kind of thing and, and not something to take marks off for the image at all. For me, this is absolutely fantastic. Such a great image. The next one we've got from Liam is this image. And this is an example of him, uh, as far as I can tell anyway, from the outside looking in, really expanding his range of photography and styles of photography that he usually shoots. I think this is great. Uh, it's a very simple image, but in street photography, it's very, very difficult to uh, get it, get yourself into situations where emotions are very high. Uh, in this instance, what I'm talking about is someone looking directly into your soul while you're taking a photo of them. That is a very... Uh, what's the word? It's a very confrontational position to put yourself in as a photographer. It's a very vulnerable position to put yourself in as a photographer. You know, shooting up close, for example, this isn't super close, but, you know, shooting up close with, say, a 24 millimeter or a 35 millimeter or something like that, street photography at that range, it is very daunting. 
So, you know, props to any emotion you can get out of that. And you tend to get more the closer you are because people notice you when you have like an 85 or a 200 or whatever, you know, you can snipe people from heaps far away and, and they don't even know that you're taking a photo of them. But when it's nice and close, you can start to get a lot of emotion. So in this image, we have this, this lady looking literally into the soul of him. Um, and it's, it's obviously somewhere in, in Europe. Uh, it's a train station by the looks of things or somewhere close to. Uh, we've got very, very simple composition. What I love that he has done is put the eye directly in the vertical or the horizontal, sorry, center of the image. This is a very common portraiture technique. You know, your eyes, the eyes, whenever you have a, a picture of a person, you as the viewer will always look for that human's eye first and foremost. And that's just the way we are wired. Eyes just attract our visual attention immediately. And so having that in the center, the very dead center of the image allows us to, again, visually orient ourselves very quickly. We know what's going on. We know what this image is all about. This is what's happening. So I love that he did that. Um, of course, humans have two eyes. And so you've always got to pick one. You could have you know, gone with this one, but I like the, the leading eye. So this, this eye, her right eye would have been far closer to the, the lens. Uh, and for me, that works really, really well. I do this in my portraits quite often as well. Uh, the rest of it is actually quite simple. You know, you can interpret this in terms of emotion and story however you want it to. Um, you could imagine, you know, where my mind goes anyway is is the aftermath of like what happened after this. I could easily imagine a scenario where she would have got like angry or like asked why you're taking photos of me and, and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, she's got some interesting earrings on and, you know, she looks like a very uh, interesting character for the environment that she's in. And I think like in terms of subject placement, that's great. Uh, obviously the image itself is out of focus uh, or at least the, the subject is out of focus. So you can see her, her face here versus you know, all of the, the details here of like the, the background and this dude in the back with the AirPod and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so obviously getting that right in the field is hard and that's a very obvious pick. What I can also see, and this kind of does take a little bit of practice in terms of editing to really get a good grasp on, um, but what he's done in the edit is actually put a very hard vignette on the sides here and here. And I'll just remove those, but it kind of gives the the effect of encapsulating your vision into a, into the central point and hones you in a little bit more. I think personally, it's a little bit too much. It's a little bit too forced, as well as these people back here, because he's added this vignette, I don't know, probably around here, all of this this section is going to be, you know, artificially darkened. And then he's kind of like brought up the people in the background as well, which I think, I personally think it could have been more effective if, you know, it was just the main character here that was trying to be accentuated. Just personal preference again, but to get something like this is quite interesting. And I think it's, it's nice that Liam's definitely exploring this kind of, uh, street photography style. All right, if you're enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button for me so that I know it's good enough to make even more free videos just like this in the future. All right, the next one we've got here is a very classic kind of Tokyo crosswalk shot. I think it's great. Uh, I've seen a bajillion of these and I've also taken a bajillion of these as well. This one in particular is nice and I picked this out out of all of the, the images that he sent me. He sent me a bunch, um, but I liked this one because I wanted to talk about um, simplicity and easy subjects. So again, this is, this is something that I talk about a lot, but the placement of both this little van and the person here 
is super interesting because it's atypical. It's atypical in the sense that it's not centered like some people would have it. It's not on a hard third as some people, well, maybe more like here as some people might have it. Uh, and the, the subjects are just slightly, you know, not where they should be. It's imperfect. And I think there's a lot of beauty in, in that. You know, I can get accused quite often of making perfect images in the sense that everything is technically right. You know, things are placed here. The colors are right. The colors are doing this and that. And all of these visual patterns are blending together and all that kind of stuff. And some people call that... Um, quite sterile sometimes. I like to think of it as, you know, you're trying to visually communicate things and what leads you to the most successful communication. Obviously it's it's doing things right or, you know, in a technically uh, sound way that most people will understand, but there is a tremendous beauty in breaking those rules, right? There is a tremendous beauty in, instead of it being you know, just one singular subject and not having this at all, you know, I think that would have been just like every other crosswalk image that I've seen here in Tokyo. But because he's, he's you know, included two subjects in this scene, I think, yeah, it's it's something that to me stands out. So, yeah, I not much else to say on this one, but I just wanted to include this one because... Yeah, this is a great example of it being, you know, somewhat imperfect. Now, moving on to this one, this is the image that I really wanted to talk about because it is an image that when I see Liam's work, this particular image stands out to me as something that he has deliberately gone out to, you know, stretch to the comfort zone of in terms of his work. I love this image. I think it's great. So what we can see here is very central figures, Working, construction, probably. Um, there are on some scaffolding, something like that. But they are shadows. And because they're shadows, you don't really know what they're doing, but you know that they're there. Something that I love as well is the use of shape. There's just so much shape here. There's, you know, you have your main shapes here. Big shape here, big shape here, that kind of vibe you even have like sub shapes here and all that all the rest of it so sure you've got those big shapes but you've also got subframe you've got subframe you've got subframe and then from there you've got other you know these lines going across acting as more subframes such that you know, this this is occupied, this is occupied, and these top portions are, you know, not occupied and empty. And that gives a visual contrast to that subframe that is, in my opinion, quite interesting. This one really accentuates it. You know, this is this is uh, vacant, this is vacant, this is vacant. Um, and then these are obviously filled with people. I Yeah, I adore this. I think this is such a very visually interesting image that... It's, it's amazing that he's shot it in the way that he he has. Another thing that I love is that the figures are very centralized. And I love this little, this little guy down here in the middle. So one thing I would have personally done in terms of taste, um, he's got it close. And this is another you know case of like perfect versus imperfect and all that kind of stuff. But if he, in the, in the situation had a opportunity to to move up or move down you know oftentimes as photographers we will go and have the camera up to our eye or that is our first instinct right sometimes we forget that we can put our cameras on top of us or you know below us or whatever especially the top one you know putting it above the eye line sometimes enables you to accentuate certain perspectives in this instance putting it above may have led to having the shadows be even taller like ending up here right instead of instead of ending down there and and that way you could have gotten even more of the people in the frame i mean it's good as it is 
I, I wonder what would have happened if he had, you know, experimented up and down as well. I think um, that would have been even more interesting than it is. But of course, as as it is, as a slice of life, as a documentation of, of every day, I think this is fantastic. And I, I really enjoy uh, this image. All right, this is our next image. And this is something that I really applaud him for in terms of uh, stepping out of the comfort zone. So what's going on is that behind the subject, all of these lines here, he's shot like a lazy shutter kind of exposure uh, and caught a plane. So this is, uh, I, would I would guess, under a, a flight path, probably pretty close to an airport. Um, and then you have you know, the wings here and then the wing here and then that's the rest of the airplane and obviously I can't draw airplanes. Um, but that's what that's what it is and he's done a very slight long shutter on it. And so for this image, you know, the subject is blurred because it is extremely difficult to have a subject stay still while you do, you know, um, a one over five second exposure handheld it's super super difficult to to get something sharp um at that kind of shutter speed so it's got a vibe you know everything's kind of blurred and he's really accentuated that vibe with all of the grain and all of the noise in the image as well it gives it this kind of filmic look um, and further to that he's also added some artificial light so you can see on the subject's face here you've got all of this, like this red portion, um, you know, you've got some of the red on the shoulders here, here as well. And then all along the side, it's great. And I think this for me adds a lot of color contrast to the image. You know, you have blues here on the sides from what looks like blue hour. Um, contrasted with the reds, which are very, very close in terms of contrasting colors or complementary colors, and they contrast really, really well. Um, and so this for me looks really, really good in terms of a in terms of color. Uh, what he's also done, and this is kind of going towards the the film look, a lot of film crushes blacks. So you know that this is a person, but you can't see this person's arm. You don't know where it starts and where it stops. He's obviously wearing some kind of jacket, right? But, you know, his jacket is is here and then there's just nothing. You don't, you don't know the shape of the outline or an outline of his arm or the rest of his coat or whatever it is. And that's very typical of what people associate with the, the film look. You know, we've got saturated but not super vibrant color. We've got little bit of grain or well, a lot of bit of, a lot of grain actually in this image um we've also got crushed blacks you know it's very aesthetically driven i like it it's very different and and very uh, a strong departure from what liam usually shoots and i really i really like that all right the last image we've got here is this one so this looks like uh someone in a house looks like what could be like a, a Japanese kitchen even um, in the snow cooking with just a single light. He has edited this in such a hard way that it really, in my opinion, it's very opinionated and stylized and it helps tremendously. He's gone for the very classic blue and orange contrasting complementary colors and it's a simple image you know you know you know exactly where to look uh all of this is just really low kind of texture uh very crushed blacks you don't really want to look at it it's dark and then you have the central window which is bright again you know bright things in an image make your eyes look directly at it to so the brightest portions of the image should be somewhat to do or somewhat around your main subject. In this instance, he's he's absolutely nailed it. I think this as an orange color, I'm not too sure what this color was originally, but this particular hue of orange 
with this particular hue of blue, I think works really well as a set of complementary colors. What he's done as well is he's offset this. So this is like the middle, right? And this would be the middle as well. And so he's got the figure on the vertical middle, just fine, um, but slightly off the horizontal middle. And I think this is really interesting. You could have done this in a myriad of different ways. And this is just the way that he has decided to do it. So I'll show you a couple of different ways he could have done it. Um, so if you take this window right here, you could have, like if you were to compose this yourself, you could have put the window, you know, kind of like this directly in the center center so that when you have the separation of the main window, um, you know, the person might have been, yeah, probably around like, you know, here kind of thing. And then, and then that would have been your orientation for the windows priority, right? Or you could have made it such that you had the window slightly offset somewhat like this, for example. And then like, this is the, the middle of the window. And then the person's face is like right there. And so, you know, lining up the middle with, with the eye. All of these are different ways you could have done it. Um, I'm just showing as an example, but this is the, I mean, the basic fundamentals of this image is that there's so much both luminosity contrast and color contrast at play that you know exactly what you're looking at. You know that this figure is the main subject of this image. And then from there, it's just about placement. And then whether you want it to be more clinical, you want it to be more avant-garde, you want it to be, you know, just a little bit non-standard. Um, you know, even like this as, as a crop, <laughs> even as this as a crop is like really, really cool, but I, I do like it a little bit further out, more like this full screen kind of way. Um, this looks a lot better, but yeah, I really enjoy this image. I think he's nailed it with the visual patterns in here and yeah, really great job. Alrighty, I think we will leave it there for this second episode of this brand new series about what makes images look good. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed Liam's work. Please go and follow him on Instagram and then let me know who else you would like to see on this new series so that we can work to make it even better and better for you guys in the future. Alrighty, I'll see you in the next video, but until then, get out there and make something that matters. Peace.